nature is not a place to visit, it's our home. Nature is all that we see. Animals, insects, disappearing into their surroundings. Using deceptions, disguises, lures. Nature is all that we hear. The call of an eagle, the hiss of ocean spray, the rumble of thunder, the doings of a cricket. The wonderful beauty of nature, the crucial, fragile affinity between animal life and their environment. All of this is World of the Wild. With 71% of the globe covered by ocean, our planet is a world of water. The open ocean, or pelagic zone, may appear uniform from above, but this is an environment more diverse than the terrestrial world and on a greater scale. Swept by powerful, endless currents influencing the conditions of life below and the weather systems above, the depths bring variation on a vertical scale with crushing water pressure and loss of sunlight. A staggeringly enormous and complex environment to survive in the Pelagic requires adaptation seen nowhere else on Earth. And in this episode, we fly through the depths with manta rays, join humpback whales on their epic migrations, hunt the water column with barracudas, frolic with dolphins, and learn the mysteries of whale sharks. Life in the Pelagic is one of constant motion. Gliding gracefully through the seas on their outstretched wings, manta rays are among the most elegant and mysterious of the ocean's travelers. Also known as devilfish for the horn-like fins atop their heads, the name manta means blanket in Portuguese and Spanish and is a better fit for the serene temperament of these gentle giants. Secretive creatures, science has only recently recognized two separate species of manta rays, a smaller breed tending to occupy coastal waters and the giant oceanic mantas that make their home in the Pelagic. Only visiting the shallows to feed and breed, oceanic mantas are built on a suitably impressive scale, with 7-meter wingspans and weights close to 2 tons. The oceanic mantas' migratory patterns are poorly understood, but they are known to cover vast distances throughout temperate and tropical waters. Travelling alone or in large groups, when moving over deep water, mantas run a straight course on a constant pace, efficiently propelled by the powerful beats of their enlarged pectoral fins. As filter feeders, mantas adopt a different style of swimming when feeding. Slowly circling groups of plankton, mantas herd the microscopic organisms into a dense ball which they then proceed to somersault through. Here their devil horns, or cephalic fins, come into play, flattening out to funnel the feed into the manta's mouth, maximizing their intake. Mantas have the highest brain to body weight ratio of any fish in the ocean. Although little is known about the manta ray brain, 
it is surrounded by a network of blood vessels that maintain it at a constant temperature. With regularly recorded dives into the frigid ocean depths of over 400 meters, the manta is able to keep this organ warmer than its surrounding tissue, an adaptation that suggests the importance of the manta's brain for its life in the open water. Feeding exclusively on plankton, the oceanic manta has an advantage over its coast-dwelling relative. With the colder waters tending to be richer in nutrients, greater concentrations of this vital food source are found in the open ocean. Nonetheless, oceanic mantas make recurring visits to tropical coastal regions such as the Maldives. At certain times of the year, these waters play host to gatherings of both oceanic and coastal mantas, numbering in their thousands. Stopping at cleaning stations along the sea floor, the deep sea visitors are relieved of the ocean parasites that settle on their skin. With individuals revisiting the same cleaning areas year after year, it is believed that mantas maintain detailed mental maps during their seafaring voyages. Crossing and recrossing the enormous breadth of the open ocean on its yearly migrations, the tireless humpback whale is both a mystery to science and a master of the high seas. With adults reaching lengths of over 15 meters and weights of 36 tons, the giant humpback fears few of the predators that lurk in the ocean depths. Found in all the world's oceans, these migratory cetaceans make their gentle passage from north to south annually, covering a staggering 25,000 kilometers a year. Known as tubercles, the distinctive golf ball-sized bumps concentrated around humpback whales' heads are a mystery to science. Highly sensitive appendages, theories for their purpose range from picking up the electromagnetic fields to gauging the density of prey species as the whales swim through them. With no proven answer, the reason humpbacks have evolved such enhanced sensory organs remains as mysterious as the waters they traverse. Feeding on krill and small fish in the cold polar waters during summer, humpbacks migrate annually in order to spend the winter months warmer in tropical seas where they will breed and give birth to their young. For the first six months of the calf's life, it will nurse from its mother and the two will be inseparable. Swimming side by side, the mother will protect and guide her calf as they make their way back across the high seas to the pole of feeding waters, constantly reaching out to touch one another with ever elongated petrol fins in apparent gestures of reassurance and affection. With proportionally the longest fins of any cetacean, humpbacks are granted surprising agility in herding and pursuing prey. Furthermore, these enlarged petrels provide greater swimming efficiency for prolonged open ocean voyages. And with the whales regularly transitioning from cold to warm waters, the increased surface area of the fins is thought to facilitate temperature control, drawing excess warmth from the body to prevent overheating. With average travelling speeds of around 10 kilometers an hour, 
humpbacks are capable of bursts of over 25 and are famed for their acrobatic surface displays. Breaching sees the humpback lift its tremendous bulk from the water before splashing down with terrific force. Like so much about these whales, the reason behind this exuberant behavior is uncertain. It may be a form of social display to other whales, a method of cleaning parasites from their bodies, or it could simply be the whales having fun. Hunted by humans since the 18th century, it was the introduction of the explosive harpoon that came to devastate the species in the late 19th. With the humpbacked population estimated to have fallen by 90%, they were taken to the brink of extinction before a ban on commercial humpback whaling was imposed in the 1960s. Today, numbers have recovered, and the open ocean has, for now, retained a healthy population of this wondrous species. Even in the warmest waters, the open ocean can be a cold, merciless place. Stalked by equally merciless predators, one species has set itself apart to become known as the tiger of the sea, the barracuda. The sleek, snake-like barracuda is one of the pelagic's apex predators. Growing to over two meters in length, aside from killer whales and sharks, the only species ferocious enough to take on a barracuda is another barracuda. Evolved over 50 million years, there are 28 species of barracudas spread across the world's oceans. While they can be found just about everywhere, barracudas display a preference for tropical and subtropical seas, which provide them a greater abundance of prey. Adult barracudas are solitary predators. Ambush hunters, they employ the element of surprise to catch their prey, charging at speeds of over 40 kilometers an hour. Juveniles are easier to spot in the wild as they frequently congregate in schools. While schooling can reduce the amount of food going to each individual, this behavior affords young barracudas a greater degree of protection from predators as they grow and develop their hunting skills. Feeding primarily on other fish, barracudas rely on their acute vision to hunt the challenging pelagic waters. And thanks to their prominent fang-like teeth, prey is generally dispatched efficiently with a single bite. Regular visitors to cleaning stations, barracudas have a symbiotic relationship with cleaner fish. While a fish this size could make an easy snack for a barracuda, both species benefit from a more different arrangement, with the cleaners receiving a free meal and the barracuda a dental hygiene service. Hunting in the open ocean requires the ability to strike at a range of depths, and the barracuda utilizes an enlarged swim bladder in order to achieve this. By inflating or deflating this enhanced organ, the barracuda efficiently controls its buoyancy at an increased range of depths. Hovering effortlessly at the optimum point in the water column, the barracuda remains constantly poised to launch its speedy attacks. Stalking the waters of the world's oceans for 50 million years, the barracuda is a master of its environment. Well dispersed, barracuda populations are considered to be in healthy numbers across their broad range, and their greatest threat is actually to the species they prey upon. The ocean is an intricate ecosystem, 
and an imbalance in any species has knock-on effects to others. It is the responsibility of humanity to ensure that when we take from the ocean, enough is left for it to sustain itself and the network of life it supports. Perhaps the most charismatic of the ocean's inhabitants, dolphins have not only succeeded in their challenging world of the pelagic, but are having fun in the process. Of the 42 species of dolphin, 38 are oceanic. And while most species display a preference for warmer waters with moderate depths, there is not an ocean on Earth in which this versatile animal cannot be found. In the open ocean, survival for many species depends upon their ability to cooperate. Highly social animals, dolphins form cooperative groups known as pods. Within the pod structure, strength in numbers offers greater protection from predators, allows for the care of young to be shared and aids in more efficient feeding. While a typical pod may have a dozen members, the major factor determining pod size is the availability of food. In times of abundance, the open ocean allows multiple groups to temporarily merge together in order to form super pods with numbers in excess of a thousand. Because visibility in the earth is an unreliable factor, dolphins do not prioritize their eyesight. In fact, it is not uncommon for a blind dolphin to survive within a pod. Nor is their sense of smell relied upon, with scientists believing dolphins lack olfactory senses altogether. For navigation and hunting within their pelagic environment, dolphins have developed remarkable powers of echolocation. With sound traveling more than four times faster through water than air, Dolphins produce a series of high-frequency clicks, among the loudest sounds made by marine animals. A form of sonar, when the clicks strike an object, they bounce a sound wave back to the dolphin, allowing it to accurately detect the object's shape, size and distance. Feeding primarily on fish and squid, a common feeding behavior sees the dolphin pod work collaboratively to herd the fish into a tight bait ball. Individual pod members then take turns to swim through the ball, snatching fish with their elongated mouths lined with conical teeth. Those that play together stay together, and a significant part of the dolphin's social life appears to revolve around simply having fun. The act of playing is thought to help alleviate tensions and maintain social harmony. Communication is vital to social cohesion and recent research on bottlenose dolphins has found that they possess signature whistles used to identify specific individuals within their pod. These signature calls are the equivalent of names within human society. Long admired by humanity, the dolphin's charm has led to successful campaigns to protect them from indiscriminate fishing practices in the past. Today, it is hoped that the dolphin's appeal will help inspire the protection not only of them, but of their habitat.
The sheer expanse of the open ocean struck terror into the early seafarers who ventured beyond sight of land. Believed to be the realm of giants, many myths have been spread about the colossal creatures inhabiting the high seas. One mythical creature that turned out to be real was the whale shark. Whale sharks are the largest fish in the world. And while the largest confirmed specimen measured over 12 and a half meters and weighed in at a hefty 21 and a half tons, reports of even bigger individuals are common. Accompanied by schools of cleaner fish, which have developed a symbiotic relationship with the whale shark, removing parasites from its body and receiving food and shelter in the process, this giant fish spends most of its mysterious life in the pelagic zone. One of just three shark species that have evolved to filter feed, whale sharks are thought to employ an acute sense of smell to follow plankton blooms over the vast seas. Rarely encountered in waters below 22 degrees, each year whale sharks venture into the depths to congregate along certain coastal zones for a very particular reason. Needing to consume vast quantities of microscopic plankton to sustain their huge bulks, whale sharks are annually drawn to the shallows by mass spawning events. Here, the corals release egg and sperm bundles into the water for fertilization, presenting these ocean giants with an abundant feeding opportunity. Feeding throughout the vast tropical seas, whale sharks swim forward with their one and a half meter wide mouth agape, drawing in as much plankton as possible. Another technique sees the shark gulp volumes of water which it expels through its five pairs of enlarged gills, processing over 6,000 litres per hour. In both cases, the unique filter pads that cover the entrance to the whale shark's throat efficiently separate the food from the water. Aside from the scores of cleaner fish that follow their every move, whale sharks are solitary animals. Their regular feeding trips to shore are the only time these creatures have been observed in groups. Scientists suspect that reproduction is a likely factor in these journeys, but whale shark breeding behavior is yet to be documented. In the open ocean, whale sharks have room to grow and size grants protection from pelagic predators. It also allows the whale shark to store more energy for long distance travel and for periods when plankton is not abundant. Increased lung capacity makes dives to depths of well over a thousand meters possible. A handy trick when threatened or in pursuit of food. And their increased water processing ability allows them to feed with maximum efficiency. Classed as a vulnerable species, with so much still to be known about this mysterious creature, its future is as uncertain as its present making its way back out to disappear into the open ocean, the only sure way to protect the whale shark is to protect the seas themselves. The oceans contain 99% of the planet's living space and less than 10% of that space has been explored. The enormity of this environment has led to its inhabitants evolving some diverse adaptations to survive within it. And in this episode, 
we have encountered graceful manta rays, durable humpbacked whales, toothy barracudas, playful dolphins, and awe-inspiring whale sharks. But the pelagic's vast scale has seen it treated as an inexhaustible resource by humanity. Decades of overfishing, mining, and pollution have degraded this environment and its ability to support life. With our planet dominated by oceans, there is increasing recognition that the health of the waters is vital to the health of the Earth. As protections for this precious yet precarious environment improve, the question is whether we are acting fast enough.